Were people ever dependent on the so-called reliability of the VIX? Well, the VIX is, you know, it's distinct from realized volatility, so we have to keep that in mind. The VIX has certainly grown in popularity, as we saw a lot of products being tied to it. And, you know, there's certainly a lot of speculation that the recent spike at the beginning of February was tied to some of those products. But we think that it's also tied to market sentiment and concerns over trade, you know, Syria and all of the the news that was sort of in the backdrop but not really bubbling forward into the market and we think that's what broke over that period. So what have your been clients asking you? you you're obviously institutional solutions, you must have had institutional clients on the phone. I mean we had a VIX at 10 and maybe even a little below for so long and then such a spike. Mm -hmm. Were they asking you what to do about this? They absolutely were. So exactly as you say, I mean the VIX was hitting, before we saw the spike in February it hit down to 9 which is what we saw in 2007. So there was a lot of concern about what does this mean? Well, how can it stay low for so long? In periods we've seen before when VIX was really sustained low over, uh, over several periods, maybe three years at a time. So um, 2002, 2002 to 2005, and we also saw it 2004 to 2007. But more recently, it's been like a five-year period, maybe punctuated in the middle briefly. So there was a lot of concern about it. Karen, give us an idea. You've researched, you've done some wonderful research about the performance of different asset classes, either before, during or after these so-called volatility spikes. We're also looking at post-peak events as well. What have you uncovered? Yeah, so that was exactly the question. <clears throat> a lot of investors wanted to know, and this is before we even saw the recent spike, what's going to happen if we do see volatility spike again? And what happens after? And should I be shifting what I do? So what we found is that during a spike, of course, you know, in the middle of a spike, you see risk assets uh, suffering a negative return. Not, not typically dramatically negative, but a negative return on average over time. But we also saw risk assets, and when I say that, I mean things like S&P or high yield rebound fairly quickly. So that was really a major finding is that for institutional investors who are thinking volatility is coming or it pops, do I really need to do something different? We found that generally you don't unless you're able to get out of the way immediately before you feel that uh, spike and that drop in assets which tends to be temporary. It really makes more sense to stay the course.